Get 29% off Basic, Premium, and Premium Plus with the Power Up Sale. Unlock our entire language learning system right now. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Portuguese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Ana. In this series, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started learning Portuguese. That's right, and we're here to help guide you on your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning a new language, why you should learn Portuguese in particular, and how to get started. There are countless reasons, but perhaps the biggest one of all is that it could actually change your life. Learning a new language unlocks new pathways that are off limits to you now. There are certain things that you simply cannot do without having the technical or cultural skills that come from learning a new language. Like working or living in another country. Knowing another language provides you with greater job opportunities. You have the freedom to move to another country halfway around the world and be able to earn a living, or even better yet, build a career from it, instead of just being stuck in one place. Language allows you to visit or live in places that you may never even have considered going simply because that wasn't a possibility for you. Knowing another language simply gives you more options to choose from. And learning a new language also helps you to be more open-minded and see the world from a new perspective. Language and culture go hand in hand. The world is a big place, and by broadening your understanding of other cultures, it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding of the many different ways that people live their lives. With language, you're able to see and experience more, which helps you to grow as a person. Learning a new language also improves your memory. Several studies have consistently shown that those who study another language have improved memory, as opposed to those who didn't learn another language. Learning another language also keeps your brain healthy by significantly delaying the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. This difference can be as much as four to five more years of quality life. And those are just some of the reasons you should learn another language. The list just goes on and on. Now you know the benefits of studying another language, but why should you learn Portuguese in particular? Have you ever heard of capoeira, Havaiana flip-flops, musicians Tom Jobim and Caetano Veloso, or the movie City of God? They're all part of Brazilian culture. Brazilian popular culture is widely known for its richness and diversity. The country's mixed background resulted in a unique culture, famous for its music, such as samba and bossa nova, and telenovelas, a type of soap opera watched in more than 100 countries worldwide. Not to mention the Brazilian football team and players, cheered and followed by the whole world, and the famous top models that are from Brazil. Learning Portuguese will allow you to take in all that Brazilian culture has to offer. Also, did you know Portuguese is the sixth most spoken language in the world? Over 260 million people speak Portuguese today, making it the fastest growing Western language after English. Portuguese is spoken in 10 other countries besides Brazil. Brazil is huge. Not only is it the largest country, it's also the largest economy in Latin America. Brazil has been the world's largest producer of coffee for the last 150 years. And it's big in other industries too, being the South America number one in automotive, oil, iron, and steel industries. Knowing Portuguese opens up many business opportunities, and knowledge of the language, of Brazilian culture, their work ethic, and business etiquette can go a very long way in the world of business. Oftentimes, it could even make or break an important business deal. Knowing Portuguese then will put you ahead of the pack. For instance, Brazilians' more relaxed attitude and pace often lead to more lengthy business interactions. Rushing these interactions, pressing for final decisions and avoiding small talk and socializing may be perceived as rude and even untrustworthy. This could definitely influence the making or breaking of a deal. We should add that only 5% of the Brazilian population speaks English. So, either for business or leisure purposes, speaking at least some Portuguese will really make a difference. And who hasn't heard of Brazilian beaches, Rio de Janeiro or Carnival? The many traditional festivities, the tropical climate and the people's hospitality make Brazil a fascinating tourist destination. 
The country's coastline measures 7,491 kilometers and is comprised of more than 2,000 beaches. Brazil is also ranked as the country with the greatest biodiversity in the planet, being home to 60% of the Amazon rainforest and the Pantanal, among other UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Okay then, we've talked about why you should start learning a language and why you should start learning Portuguese, but how should they get started, Ana? Why learn Portuguese? Well, it's simple as learning your first word in Portuguese and building up from there. The good news, though, is that you already know some Portuguese. Shopping center, notebook, feedback. There are many English loan words that are used in Portuguese today, but the reverse is also true. Many Portuguese words have found their way into English. Banana, Guaraná, Cobra. Even without teaching you any Portuguese, there's a good chance that you'll recognize some Portuguese words. Let's teach you something that you might not know, but which is very useful. Obrigada. It means thank you in Portuguese. But note that I said obrigada because I'm a female. That's useful. Let's not worry about Portuguese gender rules for now. We'll explain more in future episodes. Let's just practice this word a little. Listen and repeat after Ana. Obrigado. Obrigada. Now you try. Obrigado. Obrigada. Your turn again. Obrigado. Obrigada. Well done. Now you know how to say thank you in Portuguese. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap on what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that studying another language has many benefits, such as providing new job and business opportunities. Learning Portuguese will help you experience more of Brazilian culture and the country, where there's plenty to do and see. And to say thank you in Portuguese, it's... Obrigado. Obrigada. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Brazilian Portuguese pronunciation. Pronunciation refers to the manner in which a word is spoken, so don't focus on reading what's on screen. Instead, focus on listening and repeating. In Brazilian Portuguese, vowel sounds are represented by five characters. There are 13 basic vowel sounds that create several diphthongs and triphthongs, which are vowel sound combinations. Let's take a look at how some of the basic vowels are pronounced. A, E, I, O, U. The more closed vowels are E, O. And there are the nasal vowels. A, E, I, O, U. Diphthongs are two vowel sounds pronounced closely together to form a gliding sound. Here are some examples. Um, oi, el. Finally, triphthongs are gliding sounds made by three vowel sounds. Why, way, won. Diacritics are in some cases used in vowels to signify certain ways of pronunciation. But don't worry about them for now. We'll eventually get there. Nasal vowels are very common in Portuguese, and they may seem a little tricky. To correctly produce nasal vowels, you should relax your soft palate and the back of your tongue so the nasal passage is not blocked. It's like humming with your mouth open and adding the vowel sound to it. Let the air pass through both your oral and nasal passages. Listen and repeat after Ana. Banco. 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 There are 21 basic consonant sounds in Portuguese, represented by 20 characters. The consonant sounds in Portuguese can be very similar to English, as well as some vowels. Let's take a look at the consonants combined with a vowel. Pa, ba, ta, da, ka, ga, ma, na, nha, fa. Va, sa, za, ja, xa, ha, la, lha, ra, chi, ji. As you can see, most sounds are the same in English. Let's see in this case. 
Ciao. The first sound is the same as the ch in change. The second one is the same as the ow in out. Listen again. Ciao. See how they sound the same? That means you only have to learn a few new sounds to speak Brazilian Portuguese. As you just learned, there are a lot of identical sounds between English and Portuguese. So let's take a look at the unique sounds of Brazilian Portuguese. There are three Portuguese consonants not shared with English as well as the nasal vowels already seen in this lesson. Let's take a closer look at one of these consonants. Fruta. Focus on the second letter. Ru. This trill sound is done by lightly tapping the gum ridge behind your upper teeth with the tip of your tongue. It should be a quick, striking motion, similar to the sensation you get when pronouncing the T in words like butter, cutter, and so on. Don't roll your tongue like an English R. Most of the air should go around the sides of your tongue. Listen and repeat after Ana. Fruta. 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 Well done. Note that this trill is present in the first word we learned in the previous lesson. Do you remember it? Obrigado. Obrigada. Okay, so let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learn the characters that represent vowel sounds in Portuguese and that the language uses diacritics. Most consonant sounds in Portuguese are the same as in English, and there are some unique sounds in Portuguese, nasal vowels and three consonants. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Portuguese grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with I ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. The good thing is Portuguese uses the same SVO word order. Let's take a closer look. If we break down the English sentence I ate apple, we can see that the subject I is presented first followed by the verb ate, and then finally the object apple is positioned last. Let's compare that same sentence, I ate an apple, in Portuguese. Eu comi uma maçã. Like before, let's remove the particles to keep it simple. So, we're just left with the words, eu comi maçã, I ate apple. Subject, verb, object. Breaking down the Portuguese sentence, we can see the word order is subject, verb, and object. Which means that you don't have to change this basic structure when speaking Portuguese. In some cases, the order can be changed and the subject, in Brazilian Portuguese, is likely to be repeated forward in the sentence. But don't worry about it for now. Let's keep going. One of the great things about Portuguese is that once you learn how to form statement sentences, it's really easy to form other types of sentences. Let's see this one. Você pegou o ônibus. Subject, verb, object. As you see, the order of this statement is SVO. Now, what if you want to say this as a negative sentence, Ana? You just have to place the negative word não, which means no or don't before the verb. So we have the negative sentence. Você não pegou o ônibus. Basically, there are no different rules for these negative sentences. Just place the negative word não before the verb and keep the word order. There are also other negative words in Portuguese, such as these. Nunca, nem, nada, sem, nenhum. Nenhuma. Negative words in Portuguese may follow different rules and be placed differently. For now, just stick with não before verbs and you'll do just fine. Let's see another example with the statement. How can we make it a negative sentence with the word não? You try. Eu não tenho tempo. Well done. Notice that this negative word is not a verb, so it won't change according to verb tense. The verb changes, but the negative word doesn't, which is quite different from English. 
Eu não tenho tempo. Eu não tive tempo. Eu não terei tempo. As we mentioned before, building sentences in Portuguese is relatively simple. Let's see how we can form a question from a sentence. If you want to make an indirect question, you can think of it like it's basically a statement, like the previous phrase. Você pegou o ônibus. With a question mark at the end and a raised intonation. Você pegou o ônibus. And that's it. How simple! Unlike English, in Portuguese you don't need to use a verb at the beginning of a question. And what about direct questions? For some cases, you only need to use a question word, like o que, onde, quando, at the beginning of the sentence. The rest is like the other examples we've seen in this lesson. So, using one of these question words, we could make the following direct question by simply placing it at the beginning. Onde você pegou o ônibus? Let's place it at the beginning. Quando você pegou o ônibus? This is not an absolute rule, but it's enough to give you a better idea about question words and direct questions in Portuguese. Okay then, let's move on to the next section. As we learned in this lesson, Portuguese uses the same SVO order as English and there are no great changes in negatives and questions. So we're going to talk about some Portuguese grammar aspects that differ from those of English. That means Portuguese grammar may permit or even mandate the omission of an explicit subject. Let's see two examples. Não choveu. Negative verb word. There is no subject in this phrase, as it's the rule in Portuguese in such cases. Here's another example. Eu Estou feliz. Subject, verb, adjective. In this case, the subject is implicit. This is extremely common in Brazilian Portuguese and wouldn't be wrong to make explicit. Eu estou feliz. We'll elaborate later, but in Portuguese, the subject is encoded in the verb conjugation. That's why in this case, we know the subject is the first person singular, even though it's hidden. There is one more aspect about Portuguese grammar that may be tricky. In Brazilian Portuguese, adjectives are almost always placed after their nouns, while in English it's the other way around. Você pegou o ônibus amarelo. Noun, adjective. You took the yellow bus. Adjective, noun. Adjectives before nouns are not wrong, though. They're just used more commonly in writing and for poetic effect. It would be unusual, however, when used in daily conversation. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Portuguese sentences are formed using a subject, verb, object, or SVO word order. At the same time, this is not rigid, as Portuguese also uses other orders. Basic sentences, like statements and negatives, are very similar in their structure. To make indirect questions, you should just add a question mark at the end of a statement sentence and raise your intonation. Portuguese is a null subject language, so a lot of sentences may have the subject in a hidden condition or not present at all. Adjectives are placed after the noun and not before, like in English. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Portuguese writing. Portuguese uses the exact same alphabet as English, comprised of 26 letters. A, B, K. Let's listen to the names of the letters in Portuguese. A, B, C. The letters K, W, and Y were recently recognized as part of the official Portuguese alphabet. They are only used in personal names, foreign loanwords, and derivatives, including words from indigenous Brazilian languages. The letter Y is read like the vowel I. Yaksoba, shoyu, yanomami. The letter W may vary. It may be read like the vowel U or like the consonant V. It usually follows the pronunciation of the language of origin. Washington, Wagner, Volkswagen. And the letter K is read just like in English. Cart. 
Yakisoba, Kung Fu, Kanchianu. The Portuguese alphabet is phonetic, which means letters represent certain sounds alone and certain sounds when combined, just like most Western languages. Portuguese, like English, uses digraphs, which are pairs of letters representing a single sound, different from their components alone, but they're not included in the alphabet. For instance, the letter C sounds like this, casa, or like this, cinto. When paired with H, forming the digraph CH, we have the sound chocolate. So, as you can see, while Portuguese is largely pronounced as it's written, some letter combinations will produce digraphs that you will need to look out for. Diacritics are little marks that are added to the letters to indicate some alteration on the quality of the original letter. It usually indicates a pronunciation aspect. While in English they appear more in names and loan words, such as fiancé, in Portuguese they are very common. There are five diacritics with different uses in Portuguese. They can indicate stressed vowels and pronunciation aspects in consonants and vowels. They can also be used to differentiate some homographs or to mark grammar phenomena. Let's see what they are. In Portuguese, the acute accent is used to indicate a stressed vowel in a word. Fácil, árvore, alguém. As you see, all the stressed vowels in these words are marked with the acute accent. Vowels with the acute accent will be stressed and pronounced with open pronunciation. Avó. This word means grandmother. If said with a closed vowel, it would mean grandfather, and with no accent at all, avo. The stressed vowel now is the first one. This word is used to express fractions. So, if this word is not correctly marked, you don't know how to pronounce the last vowel properly. Specifically in this case, with an incorrect pronunciation, it would have a different meaning. As we saw in the last example, circumflexes mark when vowels are pronounced with closed pronunciation. Portuguese. Circumflexes are also used to differentiate homographs. Homographs are words that are written in the same way, but with different meanings. Vem. Vem. Pode. Pode. As you see, this mark may or may not refer to the vowel sound in such cases. The grave accent is related to a grammar phenomenon, the crassus. The crassus is a contraction of a feminine article with a preposition. Fui a plus a cidade. Verb, preposition, article, object. Fui a cidade. The grave accent in Portuguese is never a pronunciation mark so it would never alter how a vowel, syllable, or word sounds. To indicate nasal vowels, the tilde is used. Pão. Note that although the nasal vowel marked with tilde is commonly stressed, the stressed quality is not part of what the tilde means. Like in this case, sótão. The stressed Vowel is marked by an acute accent, indicate, indicating also the open vowel pronunciation, even though the tilde is present. The cedilla is the only diacritic used on consonants in Portuguese. More specifically, it is only used on the letter C, hence the Portuguese name. Cecidilha. C, when paired with vowels A, O and U sounds like the English K. Casa, acordo, óculos. Whenever the cedilha is put before these vowels, it will sound like the English S. Calçada, açougue, açúcar. Incerto, cinto. So the cedilha will never be there in these cases with I and E. Also, the cedilha is never the first letter in a word. 
the sigilia has been historically replaced by the letter S in those cases. So there is no capital. Se sigilia. Saúde. Suco. Great! Let's move on to the next section. Capitalization rules in English and in Portuguese are mostly the same. For instance, the first letter in a sentence is always capitalized, just like people's names and nations. Still, there are some significant differences between capitalization in English and in Portuguese. Let's focus on some of these. Portuguese doesn't capitalize the pronoun eu. That is the equivalent to the pronoun I in English, which is always capitalized. Claro, eu concordo. Nationalities and regional adjectives aren't capitalized in Portuguese. The same goes for a language name. Ela é brasileira e fala português. Days of the week and months are also never capitalized. A reunião será nesta quarta-feira. Normalmente, saio de férias em julho. In titles of works, such as books and movies, only the first letter is capitalized, unless there's a personal name in it. Capitãs de Areia. Memórias póstumas de Brás Cubas. These are some of the capitalization rules in Portuguese that differ from those in English. Most of the other rules are the same. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that the Portuguese alphabet is identical to the one used in English and also has digraphs. You learned that acute accents indicate both stressed and opened vowels, circumflexes indicate closed vowels, the grave accent always indicates crassus and is not a phonetical mark, the tilde is used to mark nasal vowels, and the cedilla gives an S sound to the letter C. Also, you learned the main differences in capitalization Portuguese has when compared to English. In this lesson, we'll focus on teaching you the most useful Portuguese words and phrases for absolute beginners. Make sure you are repeating the words out loud after I say the examples. Are you ready? Let's get started. The best phrase to learn when studying a new language is one that expresses gratitude and appreciation. If you had to learn only a single phrase, this would be it. We taught you this word in the first lesson of the series. Do you remember what it was? Obrigado. Obrigada. It means thank you. Say obrigado if you're a male or obrigada if you're a female. Obrigado. Obrigada. Keep repeating after Ana until you get it. Obrigado. Obrigada. Your turn. Obrigado. Obrigada. Obrigado. Obrigada. Do you remember how we talked about pronunciation of the letter R here in lesson two? Don't pronounce it like an English R. Don't roll your tongue. Listen to how Ana is pronouncing this sound. Ri. Think of the quick tapping motion your tongue makes as it strikes the top gum ridge in words like ladder or butter. Ri. Ri. Altogether, it's... Obrigado. Obrigada. Okay, one last time. Obrigado. Obrigada. Okay. The next phrase we'll teach you is perhaps the second most useful phrase of all. It's to excuse yourself. Com licença. It means excuse me. Com licença. Use this phrase when you want to grab someone's attention or when you brush by someone in the streets. Com licença. If you recall, we talked about nasal vowels in lesson two, too. Like this one. And. To pronounce it, you need to lower your soft palate and the back of your tongue, unblocking the nasal passage and allowing air to pass through the nasal cavity and out through the nose. Imagine you're humming with your mouth open and add the E vowel sound to it. N. Now you try. N. Again. N. Altogether, it's... Com licença. On a daily basis, Brazilians tend to drop the first word, saying simply... Licença. And what about showing forgiveness? This is very important in any country. In Brazilian Portuguese, 
The most common way to say I'm sorry is Mi desculpi. On a daily basis, people often drop the pronoun me, saying just Desculpi. But it can also be said Mi desculpa or simply desculpa. Both ways are correct. Note that this variation is due to conjugation aspects and it's not gender related. You can say both ways regardless of your gender. Let's listen. Me desculpe. Desculpa. It's very useful when you bump into someone when taking the busy subway lines of Sao Paulo. Let's practice a little. Me desculpe. Now you try. Me desculpe. Now let's try the variation. Desculpa. Desculpa. One last time. Desculpa. Great! Now you can say thank you, excuse me, and I'm sorry in Portuguese. Let's move on. Asking where something is is an incredibly important and useful phrase to learn. You're going to need this when asking where the bathroom, the subway station, the bus stop, or where the hotel is. To ask where something is, you should say Onde fica? Then you should verify the gender of the location you want to know about. So you can place the proper article, feminine, a, or masculine, o. Onde fica a, o? Lastly, add the location. If you want to know where the bathroom is, you should say, Onde fica o banheiro? The word for bathroom in Portuguese is a masculine gender. So, like Anna said, we put the definite masculine article O before the noun. Onde fica o banheiro? For the subway station, it'll be... Onde fica o metrô? And so on. Just remember the gender to use the correct article. Let's see some vocabulary that you can use in this sentence. Here are some of the most common words you'll need to learn. Banheiro Bathroom Banheiro Onde fica o banheiro? Next Metrô Subway Metrô Onde fica o metrô? If you ask this question, they'll direct you to the closest subway station. If you'd like to ask where a specific station is, simply place the name of the station after subway. Onde fica o metrô Consolação? Or you can just say station instead of subway. Onde fica a estação Consolação? Next. Hotel. Hotel. See that in Portuguese, H as the first letter is always silent, except for specific foreign loanwords. Hotel. Onde fica o hotel? For a specific hotel, do the same as before. Just place the name after hotel. Hotel, Hotel Intercontinental. Onde fica o Hotel Intercontinental? Next. Padaria. Bakery. Bakeries, especially in São Paulo, are really popular. There are a lot of bakeries in the city. And they usually are a blend of a bakery, a deli, a coffee shop, a restaurant, and a pizza parlor, all in one place. Often, even a mini market as well, and sometimes acting as a bar at night. There are enormous franchise bakeries, as well as smaller family ones. So, knowing this is extremely useful, especially in Sao Paulo. Okay. So, how do we ask where the bakery is? Onde fica a padaria? You can substitute almost anything and simply add Onde fica o a? to ask where something is in Portuguese. In this final lesson, you learned how to say thank you, excuse me, I'm sorry, and to ask where something is in Portuguese. And in this series, we introduced you to the basics of Portuguese pronunciation, grammar, writing, and more. Let's conclude with some parting advice from Ana and listen to some of her tips on how to learn Portuguese from a native Brazilian perspective. 
The best way to learn Portuguese, particularly if you want to improve your communication skills, is to watch and study contemporary Brazilian videos, like soap operas and news programs. That way, you can learn expressions and the peculiarities of pronunciation that you can't learn from regular grammar books and methods. A great way to learn, which is also pleasant, is studying with MPB, Brazilian Popular Music. Brazil is famous for its unique type of music, and the lyrics usually mix formal and informal Portuguese in a rich and poetic way. You can increase your vocabulary while enjoying good music and learning more about the country's culture and history. A big mistake I see learners make is not asking native speakers for help with the language. Brazilians are in general very warm and receptive, and they want to be polite, so they won't correct your grammar or pronunciation. They're usually flattered and happy to see the effort in Portuguese, so they reciprocate with doing their best to understand foreigners and not paying attention to their mistakes. Because of that, a lot of learners end up plateauing in their Portuguese by getting too comfortable. Don't do that. Ask your Brazilian friends and colleagues to help and correct you. Tell them it will not offend you. On the contrary, it will make you very happy. If you are not in Brazil, a tip is to browse the web for Brazilians who are willing to be your friends. It shouldn't be difficult. Practice your pronunciation a lot and try your best to remember noun genders. Make a list if you need. It's very common for learners to mix the genders up. As there is no exact rule to determine when a noun is masculine or feminine. Watching contemporary videos, such as our videos here at Portuguese Pod 101, will ensure that you are learning real, applicable Portuguese in the fastest and most effective way. You've reached the end of this course, Introduction to Portuguese, but it's only the beginning of your journey to Portuguese fluency. Where do you go from here? Try our Portuguese in 3 Minutes series, where we teach you beginner vocabulary and even more useful phrases. Or check out any of our other video series. We have many different categories for you to choose from. Good luck as you continue learning Portuguese, and I'll see you in another video. Bye! Bye!